Hey there everyone, long time no see. I'm back at you with another video and today we're gonna to be covering the new Excel to table functionality. This allows us to take any Excel file and turn it into a power app in a matter of minutes. It will create the Dataverse table for us, import the Excel data, and create a fully functioning Power Apps Canvas app for us to interact with our data. I'll walk you through how it's done right after this. So if you haven't looked at Power Apps recently, the homepage got a makeover a little bit ago. And on this new Power Apps homepage, I'll show you how we get to this new Excel to table functionality. If we click this start with data option, you'll see the option here to upload an Excel file. Now to test this out, I'm actually gonna be testing it on two different Excel files that I have. I have one file here that has my data formatted in a table. And this table has information about registrations and it has nearly a thousand items in it. So we'll see how it handles something with a lot of data formatted as a table. And we'll also take a look at this other Excel file that I have, which the data is not formatted in a table and it has over 500 records of some order information. So we're gonna look at how this Excel to table functionality handles each of these different types of Excel spreadsheets that we have. Let's start with the tabular data. So we're going to click the select from device option and the tabular one is my registration. So we're gonna go to open and behind the scenes, how this is working is it's using some of the new AI functionality that they started incorporating across the Power Platform to be able to recognize the columns that we have in the Excel sheets and create and recommend a Dataverse table structure for that to store our data. So the idea behind this would be if you have some kind of process or information that you're using Excel for to store that data and work with it, if you wanna get off of Excel and into a real database and a system to manage that data, this will help you do that really quickly. So it's going to suggest a Dataverse table structure, create the Dataverse table for you, and create a Power App for you to interact with the data. So as you can see, it only took a few seconds there for this to recognize all of the columns that we had in that spreadsheet. And because I tagged my columns in the Excel with the right data types, it was able to automatically recognize that and carry that over into the Dataverse table structure. So it recognized these as single line of text, but then it also recognized the email that it should be an email column type in Dataverse. So it's recognizing that we can see these are clickable links. And it was able to surmise the shirt size column should be a drop down column, multiple choice. So we can select from a list of items what the shirt size should be. It also automatically suggested a name for the table. So this is one of the first things you'll wanna double check when you're using this new feature is to see what it came up with and edit that to match whatever you're building here. So it has employee record, but this is actually a registration list. So I'm gonna change this display name by clicking on that pencil to registrations. And we'll change this description as well. So we'll say this table contains registration records. And we can optionally change the primary column here. I'm gonna leave that as the ID. And we can change the schema name if we want as well. So we'll change the schema name as well to registrations. And now if everything looks good with the recommended table structure, I can simply say create app and it will go and create a Power Apps Canvas app for us that has this data source automatically added. So right now it's creating that Dataverse table for us and it's going to create a Canvas app that uses that data so we can start interacting with it. So it's loading right now and I'm trying to do minimal editing on this so you can get a feel for how long it takes from uploading your Excel spreadsheet to creating an actual app. So now we see we really have a fully functioning app. Now, one of the things I like about this, if you've been around Power Apps for a while and you've used some of the start from data templates, you've noticed that it used to create a three screen application for you, one screen for browsing the items, one screen for adding a new item and another for editing an item. What I like about this is it keeps it very simple by putting everything on one screen. So on the left-hand side, it's where we can browse all of our items. And on the right-hand side is where we either add an item or see and edit an item that we have. Now, what I really love about this is that it's responsive out of the box. So this is gonna work without me having to do anything extra on my desktop just fine as you're seeing here, but it will also adjust and respond accordingly to be optimized for my mobile device and my tablet devices. 
And one thing that you might notice that is new when we're working with this in the top right hand corner when we have it in preview mode here is we have this new option. This is going to allow us to preview what this application will look like on different device types. So this is really helpful for you to test out the responsiveness of this without having to go through the pain of publishing it, uploading it to your device and doing all that testing. We can simply click on any of these icons. Like if I want to see what it will look like on a phone, I can select this drop down. It has all of these different types of phones that you can emulate and see what your app will look like on. So I can select what I have here, which is the iPhone 12 and get an idea of what this application will look like. So it's going to show first initially the list of items that we have here. So I can select one of these items and then that will take me to the details screen where I can see all the information about the items. So as you can see, works great on a phone. If I want to see what it will look like on a tablet, I can go to an iPad Pro, for example, and this is what it would look like on a tablet in portrait mode. So, so many good innovations going on in the Power App space here, night and day difference, making it so much easier to be able to build responsive apps. We can just simply upload an Excel spreadsheet. It builds a responsive app for us and we can test that it's actually responsive and looks good right here in the maker experience, which is amazing. So that Excel spreadsheet that I uploaded had a thousand records. So let's see and make sure that it actually uploaded all the records. So we have the app here and if we go to the data tab, we see that it did automatically add that Dataverse table that it created for us from our Excel file. So let's actually go to edit data. And this is another thing I love. We can edit the data right here from the application without having to go into another tab. So we see this quick view to be able to see the data inside of my table. I can scroll through and I'm scrolling and scrolling. It looks like we have all nearly 1,000 records. So we had 999 records total, and it added all of those in here. And I can, of course, add in my additional columns so we can see all the information that we have. So we had company name, email, first name, last name, and all of that. So I can save that and see the preview right here in my app of all the data that I have. So it looks like all thousand records came across just fine and it's added here into my Dataverse table and I have a fully functioning Power App to be able to interact with that data. So what more could you really ask for? This functionality is really game changing. So this is with an Excel file that the data was already formatted as a table. And as we know, if we worked with Excel data inside of Power Apps in the past, that was generally a requirement if we wanted to pull in data from Excel and Power Apps that had to be formatted as a table. But what if you have something in Excel that has thousands of records and it's not formatted as a table and you can't or don't want to have to go through the pain of formatting that that way and you just want to upload that data. So for that, we have this order spreadsheet. So this is not formatted in any way as a table. So I haven't did anything special to this. So we'll see how it's able to handle this file. So we'll go back to our start with data and select the upload an Excel file option again and select from device. And this time we'll select our order spreadsheet and we'll see what it's able to come up with here. Now this spreadsheet has slightly less items in it. We had about almost 500 items in the order spreadsheet. So we'll see again how it's able to handle and how fast it can recognize the data in there and suggest a table structure for us. All right, so it's already done. It looks like all the data, again, this is not formatted as a table in this case in any way. So it's just a uh, plain data in an Excel spreadsheet. And it looks like it still came across okay. So we have um, some ID columns here. Our quantity, if we look at that, I was able to recognize that, that it should be a number field, which is what we want. Order date. Um, so this is one thing that didn't come across as expected in this case. So it looks like order date came through as a string. So this might be something we want to override. So we can simply go and select the drop down, go to edit column. And for data type, we can choose date and time. And then we can specify the format more, whether we want to do date and time or just date only. So I might do date only here and we can update that. And so you'll see now we're getting some errors. So this is something that even if you don't have your data format as a table, it will work, but it's very important that you at least go through all of your columns in the Excel spreadsheet and make sure that the data types are defined. Otherwise you'll run into issues like this where it'll recognize this as a string. And when you go try to even change it to say a date, like it should be, it's not going to recognize the data. So it's not going to be carried over correctly.
So what we'll need to do to fix this is go back to our Excel spreadsheet. And it's almost like I planned this error to happen here. All right, so we'll go to the order date field and we'll see how it did not come across as we want it. So in Excel, we'll right click on this, we'll go to format and we'll choose this date option here and click okay. So now that data is formatted okay, which is good. Uh, we might also just, while we're in here, make sure we're avoiding any other potential errors. So we'll go into our total amount. We'll format those cells and we'll do that as currency. And then even though quantity came across okay in this example, I'll go to format cells and we'll format that as a number with zero decimal places. And then the rest should be okay. So we'll give this a save. So just making sure that we have good clean data now. So we'll go back in this case, we'll leave and discard this table and we'll upload that orders spreadsheet one more time. And now that we've formatted those cells with the correct data types, it should come across fine. It should recognize what we want those data types to be when it recommends our Dataverse table structure here. This is already looking much better. So it looks like we have the quantity as a number, order date is coming through as a date as we want. And then all the rest of the fields are okay. Total amounts looking great. So there we have all of our data and our Dataverse table. So we can click create app. So now we have this example with unstructured data, not formatted as a table inside of Excel, turning that into a responsive power app again in a matter of minutes, just by uploading that with this new functionality. There's our beautiful responsive power app. And then of course we can go to our data tab. We can edit the data in here. Just make sure all 499, I think it should be, records came through. So if we do some scrolling here, and it looks like it did. There's all of our data, which is exactly as we were expecting. So just to wrap up, a few things that we need to keep in mind when using this new Excel to table functionality. Since the functionality here is taking your Excel file and moving that into a Dataverse table, you will need Power Apps Premium Licensing to be able to utilize this feature and use the app that it builds for you since it's using Dataverse. Also, when you're uploading data in here, you might have noticed as we were going through the process, like say this registration spreadsheet that had the thousand records in it, when we were looking at the preview of the data that it gave us in this window here to see the table structure that it recommends, you might have noticed that we only have 20 items. So don't be afraid if you only see 20 here in this view and your Excel spreadsheet has thousands of records, that doesn't mean the data isn't gonna be carried over as we saw before. It's only gonna show the first 20 in this case because that would take too long to produce this view. So when we click create an app in the background, that's where it's taking all of your data and moving it over to Dataverse for you. So all of your data will get carried over. So this functionality is in public preview right now, so make sure to check it out, give it a try and see what you think and try it out on your different Excel scenarios. It will be a great way once it is generally available to convert those old Excel spreadsheets into Power Platform solutions. I'll put a link to some more resources to learn more about this feature in the video description. And I'd love to hear what you think about this new functionality, so drop a note in the comments and let me know what you think. Before you go, do me a favor, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so you can be updated on future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.